Basically, these defenses um, evolved because, I mean, we are interacting with retroviruses for many hundreds, thousands, millions of years. And um, so we have evolved factors that basically normally would degrade the virus or would render it non-infectious or prevent release. The problem is that HIV can become resistant often. That's similar to drugs. And also it can basically change uh, its structure in a way that the antiviral factors don't recognize it anymore. But the virus also has evolved some really specific tools, small viral factors um, that basically uh, mediates the deg degradation of the antiviral factors in the cell. So basically, pandemic HIV-1 M strains have evolved the ability to get rid of everything in the cell that the virus doesn't want or that is uh, blocking its replication. Basically, there's a huge reservoir of similar viruses in African monkeys and a large number of about 40 different monkey species in Africa is infected with similar viruses. And of these three species, chimpanzees, gorillas, and uh, sutimangabees have transmitted their virus to humans. And it's now that altogether there were at least 13 independent transmissions. And uh, four of them were HIV-1, which is derived from gorillas and chimpanzees. And nine of them were from sutimangabees. Um, but these have been uh, not very successful. So only one transmission from chimpanzees is really responsible for the AIDS pandemic. Is there a group M? That's a group M, major, right. And this group also, basically all the different subtypes that people talk about are all group M virus. It has been, uh, become clear that there is actually a, a relatively large number of antiviral factors. And one of them is called TRIM. Normally it binds to the viral capsid and then degrades it and then it's not infectious. Um, the problem is that the capsid of HIV-1 does not bind the human TRIM anymore, which means that the human factor can uh, ba is basically active against monkey viruses, but not against the human virus anymore. And it's similar for some of the other factors. Another really very important factor is called APOPEC. It attacks the genome of the virus. So basically it introduces a lot of changes in the virus and then it becomes completely non-infectious. Mm -hmm. And there is a viral protein that is called virus infectivity factor because it drastically increases the infectiousness of the virus by uh, degrading this antiviral factor APOPEC. Um, yeah, and another protein called VPU degrades tethering, which is made mediating the attachment. Mm -hmm. So these small viral proteins basically um, bind to the antiviral factors and then mediate the degradation in the so-called proteasome. Actually, I think they are already relatively pathogenic. So I think the main difference is not uh, with regard to pathogenicity, but more to spread. So the non-pandemic strains are also already active against APOPEC and TRIM. Um, but they are less active against tethering. And um, tethering, as I said, facilitates virus release. And we think that it affects the re release of the virus also in genital fluids, like semen or vaginal fluid. And it may just prevent the effective transmission. Although this is uh, mainly just uh, based so far on cell culture experiments. And uh, it has not really been proven uh, uh, in 
monkey models or in, in humans, but I think it's very plausible. I mean, I must say that there is already a lot of progress at the moment because, I mean, the number of new AIDS cases and also new infections, uh, infections uh, is declining now because more and more people are treated also in Africa. And I think this really slows the virus down. I mean, recently there were still more new infections than people that started therapy, but I think now maybe we are all already close on winning the, as a battle because a lot of people start therapy. And I'm not so sure if we can ever cure the infection. This may be di uh, difficult. But I think that there are now some very long-lasting drugs that you only have to take every several months that are very promising. I also think that they are in the vaccine field with very effective uh, protein neutralizing antibodies. There's a lot of progress. So I think that there will most likely be approaches where you can uh, control the virus without having to take drugs every day, maybe every few months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with regard to the elimination of the virus, there are some interesting approaches. If they will ever work, it's difficult to tell.